Footnote. Every application is different. Everyone's needs are different. Everyone's perceptions and tastes are different. With that in mind, Ford's EEC4 distributor is, according to MSD, one of the finest ignitions running. It will work just fine until you start increasing the compression, by any method. That is when it becomes weak. The EEC4 ignition is identical to the 5.0 liter Mustang and there are plenty of aftermarket parts to support it. Caps, rotors, wires, boxes, ignition boost timing computers, dial and timing from the dash, there are no limits. Spark plugs and plug wires are mostly personal preference and aesthetics, just make sure they were not solid core. The noise from these wires will damage your ECU. Taylor, MSD, Excel and others make wires for the 3.0 liter or the equivalent year 5.0 liter Mustang, just use the 6 shortest wires. Stay away for split fires with any high output ignition, they will not hold a gap. Open your spark plug gap in 0.005 increments until power, mileage go down, then back up 0.005. Always start with the Ford specs for your engine and move the gap, heat range as needed. Nitrous and boosted applications have special spark plug needs. Make sure you do your homework. The 3.0 liter cast iron crank will handle quite a bit. There are Vulcans that make over 240 horsepower on a cast crank. The secret is, it will not tolerate any detonation with the increased horsepower. It will fail. You must do a solid build up and seriously address detonation with water injection. No sharp edges in a cylinder or combustion chamber, ceramic coatings, etc. It will not stand up to higher PMs for a prolonged period either. Sure, it can rev to 7000 RPMs. Once. The 3.0 liter Vulcan is incredibly reliable and will put out some serious numbers if you approach it scientifically. Keeping a realistic 6000 RPM setting on the chip or ignition box, limiter. 6,663 RPM is the theoretical grenade point with the current stroke, rod length and hyperotectic pistons. Regardless, use Aerostar main studs instead of bolts, never, ever reuse head bolts or main bolts. They are only $50 a set from Ford. Minor rods have to be made to use four sets of studs and still retain the factory wind dodge tray, use an early torus wind dodge oil pan. A forged crank's main purpose is high RPM stability and strength. It will tolerate some outright abuse, but is not mandatory for 240 plus horsepower, unless you want to keep it wrapped up tight over 5,500 RPMs all the time, then you must go forged. It is possible, and has been done, to modify a forged 3.0 liter or 3.2 liter SHO crank to fit the Vulcan block for $800 one comma all in welding and machining. This will support almost 400 horsepower. Look at the 3.2 liter V6 SHOs online that are running superchargers at 10 pounds per square inch of boost or more. Granted, you need to use the SHO Ford pistons, rods and high quality hardware and the stock valve train won't handle much over 5,500 revolutions per minute, but the crank could handle it. The 3.0 liter block can be taken to 3.1 liter with boring and a slight offset grind. 3.2 liter with a little milling of the piston's face but custom pistons are the real way to do it. 3.3 liters with 5.400 inches 302, 5.0 liter. Stroker rods providing you use the small block Chevy 2.100 inches or SHO 2.049 inches raw journal and watch the pistons. The block will take a 0 .060 over bores Ford sells these pistons for the 3.0 liter. The right block can be pushed, if sonically tested, to 0 0.075 allowing Forge Pindo 2.0 liter pistons to be used. I would prefer 3.552 inches bore myself. This is entirely decided by your machinist's skill and the depth of your wallet. Our weakest area is the pistons. They are hyperotectic, nothing more than high temperature castings with a high silicon content, that are better than cast, but not as strong as forged. If you want high RPMs, you need forged pistons, 
red line is a function of valve drain and piston speed, over 6,500 revolutions per minute, you need forged pistons. I have quotes from two companies that will make forged pistons per spec from $69 to $90 each. Again, stock compression and 3.3 liter will work fine for a daily driver that keeps the 5,800 RPM limit and only sees it only occasionally. If you run 12.5 to 1 compression, lots of nitrous or twin turbos at 15 psi, they will melt in fast order. Get forged. They are noisier when cold, piston slap due to the reduced expansion of the billet material, but you will get over it. We are fortunate enough to have a very reliable and capable oiling system. We can make some improvements though. To burn thoroughly scrub every last millimeter of the engine. Total roller engine builders can experiment with reducing the oil sent to the top of the engine, using reducers in the rear oil galleys, a la small block Chevy. Use a quality aftermarket or forward oil pump, relieve and blueprint all the flow passages and use a small spacer between the pressure relief spring and the pump housing, experiment with size, to increase pump pressure. Remember to use a quality 1 quart filter relocation kit. An oil cooler and thermostat will help, too. Headers help mainly above 4,500 RPM, but will increase mileage. They are almost mandatory with any real forced induction to lower exhaust temps and handle the increased air movement. Exhaust size is slave to horsepower and nothing else. Too big and you lose your bottom end. Too small and you lose top end. See any search engine to determine the exhaust tube you need. Pre-1998, intake manifolds suck and the throttle bodies is too restrictive. The heads are prone to cracking and need some mild porting and polishing. Use aluminum intakes and keep the runners 7.5 inches from the center line of the plenum to the lower flange. This is a tuned port for 3000 RPMs. You can add or subtract length to target a specific point. The 3.0 liter has a relatively weak cam profile, but it is reliable. There are at least three companies doing 3.0 liter cam grinds, or either version. The 2001 Taurus and 2002 Ranger have a dual profile cam with a more aggressive exhaust. The roller cam setup is identical to the 5.0 liters V8 in design, and the lifters are the same. We need slightly stronger keepers retainers and valve springs to deal with more enthusiastic and spirited driving. If you rev over 5,500 RPMs regularly, invest in a quality set of double valve springs. If you have revved over 5,800 RPMs on factory single springs, replace them now. I do not feel that anyone on the street needs more than 5,800 RPMs if they select the proper gear ratio. 3.73 to 1 is the ideal gear ratio with our rod and stroke. It is mathematically perfect. But if you change your tire size, trans ratio is a ring and pinion. You change your effective gear ratio so research to decide the right ratio for your application. The Vulcan is the ultimate sleeper of V6 engines if built right and while it is not cheap to make them perform they can made to outrun some V8 cars. Just remember to address the weaknesses and you can have some fun. If you like the video press the like button and while you are at it subscribe and smash the bell icon to get the heads up on more content when they are posted. Until next time.